This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Today's episode of the Doc and Jock Wrestling Podcast is brought to you by The Athletic. Premium coverage for passionate Detroit sports fans. Listeners of this podcast can save 20% off the first year of an annual subscription by visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. Don't miss out on in-depth coverage, in-depth features, and great stories on a great Detroit sports website. Definitely check out and subscribe to The Athletic by visiting theathletic.com slash DSP. Episode 32 is Among Us, Doc and Jock's wrestling podcast. On today's show, we're going to go take a listen to a former wrestler, now rapper. We're going to listen to him, listen to his new uh, listen to his new track and how awesome it is. Uh, some big movement possibly for a former WWE star, now Impact star, maybe becoming a New Japan star. We'll talk about that. Of course, we're going to review SmackDown and Raw. But before we get into all of that, I've got to bring to the main stage, he's the man, he's the guy. This guy eats, sleeps, consumes wrestling like their bootios. He is the doc, John Macaroon. What's going on, cuz? I can't wait to talk wrestling with you, man. It's the best part of the week. I definitely love talking wrestling, man. It was a good week. Um, Raw and SmackDown, it was very fun to watch and uh, lots to get into, man. But first and foremost, how did you find that script, dude? I think that was really cool that you found a script um, on Reddit and I, you and I were talking before we recorded. I went over it and uh, for those who didn't see it, it was basically a script on um, what went down during the, the B team when they had the barbecue and the food fight and things like that. It was a fun little bit. It was a fun little segment and you found it on on Reddit, and it was such a detailed television oriented script. Mm-hmm. And you and I were looking at it going, Seriously, this is how it's put together. I mean, it was literally like a rundown sheet where each character, um, each character had a, a, a line and a way like they had to, you know, pause for a crowd reaction. I tried my hardest to memorize it, and I'm like, Dude, you got to basically, you know, take care of someone else's life in your hands, and then when you do a promo, go out there and try to act like an actor. So that's why I think NXT is really important for all these cats to try and nail it down. I couldn't for the life of me try and nail down that script, man. That was pretty interesting stuff. A lot of people liked it. Yeah, it was. Um, I don't know. I was scrolling through Twitter and somebody else had it. Yeah. And I just I took a screenshot of the actual image because it was like a link to the to yep. the actual page. So I took a screenshot and I just put the screenshot out there for everybody to be able to read it a little bit easier than what I did to find it and read it myself. But yeah, totally interesting. There's so much production that goes into it. It's too much though, right? I think it's on the board. It was like word by word reaction. It's too much. Like you uh, need to just let these guys go out there and just, you're not necessarily free wheel, but give them some bullet points. Be like, here, you need to hit this, this, and this, and don't forget to sell the pay-per-view. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, bro. And just let them go out there and talk. Look, I found that, by with us doing our podcast, right, there would be times where I would try to script so much of what I wanted to say, it would just come off as me reading, and it would just sound horrible. It didn't sound natural at all. It was just because I wanted to make certain points on certain things instead of just going with a bullet point process where I'm like, hey, talk about this, talk about this, talk about this. Uh, this is interesting. And working it into the flow of the conversation, I would basically sit there and I would recite lines to you. And you just look at me like, what the hell are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I thought I made a good point. You're like, cool. Now don't read. Just yeah. talk. And it's like, oh, okay, cool. You know, that that's the problem. Like Roman Reigns, this is what I was telling you before when we were doing some show prep. Everybody says Roman Reigns is awesome when he's not playing Roman Reigns. Like if you just sit there and you just talk to him, if you happen to come across him at like an autograph signing or you happen to to see him in, I don't know, at LAX before he boards a plane, he has a really good sense of humor. He's got a really good quick wit to him. He's a really funny, gregarious guy. You make him be Roman Reigns and you make him read these lines, he's like a cardboard cutout. You know, you get more life out of out of an inanimate object than you do out of Roman Reigns, and that's part of the reason why the crowd hates him. 
Yeah, and I feel like you have all the staff. I understand why, but when segments are overproduced and these guys are athletes, not really actors, right. that's why a lot of the main roster spends time. That's why the new program is to spend a lot of time in NXT because part of it is video training and learning how to remember scripts and delivering it that way. And that's why I think a lot of the athletes go there first is because that's what they want you to do. It's going to be scripted because it is a television show. It's a production. I can understand it because when you market yourself and you have to kind of agree with it a little bit in that the WWE earned a billion dollar television deal. So I can understand it. You can't just let someone go out there. I just think it's over scripted. Yes. Meaning let us, let's, let's see the flow of what we want, but you don't have to script every single word. That's all we're saying. We're not saying just go out there and free wheel it, but just say, look, you're going to have this barbecue. The intention is for, for some laughs, be creative, have some fun and sell the pay-per-view. That's all you need. You right. don't need like uh Curtis Axel saying this. Then you got Bo Dallas saying this, and then you got to wait for the, it's like, dude, let these guys go out there and have a little bit of fun. It's, like it's too somebody much. Somebody throw beans on somebody. Yeah. Rhino ends up through a table. Done, 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 done. And we're good. And we're good. Do you have more respect for, for WWE superstars now that, after seeing that and understanding what they have to go through. Yeah. And can you like, there are times where you're watching raw or SmackDown and you can just see them in their brain. Thinking. Just, yeah. Just shut down and go to what, what was on that script. No, you know what why? To say? You know why? Because I saw it on SmackDown. Um, a lady was given a promo. She missed it and they had to go back and do it. Yeah. You could tell that, Oh, I, I was off a word. I was supposed to go back and say this. Yes. It's not natural and things it's, like that. Yeah. Others can, can make mistakes like the Miz. We talked about it when he flubs, he just makes it funny and he's just a natural on air character. And so that's fine if you want to script someone like that. But all these wrestlers don't need an expansive no, segment script. They don't. I was like, oh, I couldn't just, even remember it. Just give them bullet points. Let them go out there and do the thing. I mean, that was yeah. the best thing about Steve Austin, right? Yeah. Best thing about uh, HBK. I was telling you the story too about HBK. They brought HBK back and they were like, hey, we're going to do a segment with you. Um, you're going to be with this guy. Here's your script. He was like, oh, okay, cool. He looked at it and, yeah, he looked at it and he, and he told the, uh, the, the booker or whoever his booking agent was, he was like, oh, okay, cool. I got this. The guy was like, you, you already got that? He was like, oh, yeah, we're good. Don't worry about it. But he looked at the talent. The talent was like, you, you, you memorized your lines that fast? He was like, he crumbled it all up, threw it behind himself. He was like, no, man. He's like, you memorize your lines and I'll go off you. He's like, that's way too much. Here's the biggest issue with WWE is that you can go off script if you're over. Yes. Yeah, and so that's the tough part is if I'm a performer and I'm counting on these writers to get me to get over, I like, no, I want to say me, I'm going to get over. So yeah. you can go off script, but that's a bigger gamble in that mm-hmm. if you throw the dice, you go off script and you disobey Vince McMahon and you don't get over, your ass is on the bottom end of the totem pole. You're going to get worked. You're going to be a jobber. John Cena, uh, I believe Dean Ambrose gets some creative liabilities to, to do whatever he wants to do. Uh, Triple H isn't scripted. And I, that's really, it's about it. It's about it. Everybody else is over scripted. And that's what, that's the big thing is that you're putting your career in the hands of writers. And so you got to take that and deliver it in a way to get over. And then that's the part you got to do is you got to, I think that's probably the smartest route. The safest route is take the words and make it your own, Mm -hmm. but in a way that gets over. So then you can go to Vince and say, look, it's good, but here's my twist on it. And it's going to be over. And I'm just curious if the yes stuff how that came to be too, because that's one of the most over things that's ever been well, made. The, the was, yes chant and the, the, the movement and all that, how that came to be. That I believe was just so organic. Yeah. I, it, it was I, just I wonder, something yeah. that, that just took place. I mean, Daniel Bryant himself in his incarnation, WWE is very organic. That's why he's the people's champ. Exactly. So, all, right. all right, let's jump into raw. So we opened with Braun Strowman cutting a promo that Finn Balor interrupted, which led to a pretty solid match. Again, Finn and Braun, Line up uh, opposite of each other, and again, we get a really good match. This time, it looks like Finn's going to win the match. That is until Kevin Owens, who kept interrupting during the match from the commentary desk, gets involved. And Kevin Owens then tries to wreck house, doesn't really work out, um, gets a ladder chucked at him, which I thought was really impressive. Braun Strowman picks up one of the big ladders that are used for the TLC matches and will be used for Money in the Bank, and basically throws it, uh, 150 feet up the ramp from the very top of the ring. Uh, did you like how this tied Money in the Bank together and kind of moved it along? I did. I felt like it was a decent opening segment. I liked the way Finn Balor and Braun Strowman have chemistry. Kevin Owens is just a natural antagonist. Mm-hmm. It made for a good segment. I was excited to kick off the Memorial Day edition of Monday Night Raw. Tough for the fellas to have to work on a holiday, but it was a good opening segment. It really was. And again, you didn't have a huge long promo that we always bitch about. Right. It, this got right into the action. Get into the action. Right from there, we go into Seth Rollins versus Jinder Mahal. This was probably Jinder Mahal's best match he's had in 
forever. This was an incredible match, I thought. And you know why? He can have good matches, but the most importantly, it's his opponent that yes. has to be the leader. So who does he have great matches with? Seth, Seth Rollins, Rollins, AJ Styles. And so that's the thing is that you need a good dance partner. And sometimes for Jinder, the big stage maybe is uh, on a consistent basis, not the best for him. But on this moment, on this day, that match with Seth Rollins and the way that Seth came in on his birthday and kind of just shooed Elias out, it made for a tie-in when you tell me what happened after when Seth Rollins kind of went crazy, destroyed uh, Ginger Mahal with the chair. He kind of got fed up with all the interference from the outside. And then Seth Rollins just brings a chair and destroys it, which is fine. You know, you have a DQ finish. He does a good job it's keeping fine. everything tied in to what happened last week as well. Exactly. So you're that, keeping that Roman Reigns, Ginger Mahal, Seth Rollins build. And now... Yes, then Seth Rollins jumps on the announce table. And what happens? Elias comes out and bang! smacks him with the guitar from behind. And Seth Rollins throws himself down under the concrete below gets carted out with a neck brace on. So now what you've done is you basically have taken this uh, Seth Rollins, Jinder Mahal, Roman Reigns meld, and now you've incorporated Elias into it. So I'm expecting next week we'll probably get uh, uh, some tag team action here. Do you, do you see this going this way, or do you think maybe it goes Seth Rollins, Elias, maybe Jinder then gets involved, Roman comes out, and then, hey, hey, player, yeah. we got a tag team. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. So at some point I think we're going to get a tag team between those four guys. Obviously, Nia Jax is the antagonist here in her match with Ronda Rousey, and her spotlight on Monday Night Raw showed you the way here because Nia Jax comes out and she basically antagonizes a jobber, crushes a jobber at the whole the whole time she's on microphone yelling to Ronda Rousey who's sitting up at the commentary desk, and this helps move this story along, and I think it gives you some definitive action on who is playing what role here. Ronda's your baby face. Nia's your heel. This is where we're at. Ronda gave you a new face. It was confused. Um, she's got her pointing face, and she's got her happy face, and now confused face. So I, I like the way it moved the story along. Um, there are times where I don't think Ronda does very good in the ring, and it kind of frustrates me a little bit. Yeah, and it's weird kind of how they're using Nia Jax. Like, how are you then going to be you know, somebody that was a bullying, but right. then you're <laughs> right. now a bully. It's, it's like, so disjointed. It's uneven. It's, yes. it's just, I think it's a few that maybe they entered into a little bit too soon. I think Ronda Rousey needs to be in the title picture, but not against Nia Jax. No, and not really better. It would have been better maybe to continue the feud with Alexa Bliss, mm -hmm. let Bliss get the title back, and uh, have a good series of matches similar to Nakamura and Styles. Have like two or three longer term matches and have it where Alexa comes back with the belt. And I think the belt should come off of Alexa Bliss with Ronda Rousey. Yes. Coming off of Nia Jax, it feels like, well, if you're going to give it to Rousey, you're just going to, you know, have this individual Nia Jax that you built up and have her lose the belt in two mm -hmm. months, that doesn't make much sense. It does, that doesn't make any sense. And then it's always better when somebody earns it, right? Yeah. You're like You as the audience, you get invested when the character earns it and has to fight for it. Ronda Rousey's had a match. She's had one match. It was a tag match against Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. What has she earned? How did she get to, how did she get catapulted to this? Like, I understand that outside of wrestling, she's the draw. I get it. But you need her to have her start at the bottom and, and wrestle some of the other girls and work her way up. You know, you don't need to sit there and throw her in a match with Lana. I get it. All right. You want to put her in there with somebody who can help carry her a little bit. Mind you, I don't think Nia Jax is the best in ring performer, not to be carrying somebody who's as green as Ronda Rousey is. You, you, like you said, you probably want to put her in there with a, with somebody like Alexa Bliss, who's a little bit more adapt and can help lead in. Again, you need a good dancing partner. Put her in there with somebody who's a good dancing partner. I don't think Ron, I don't think uh, Nia Jax is the best dancing partner here. So have her work her way up with some good dancing partners, and then have her go for the title. It just doesn't make sense to me right now. I, I feel like it's all being very very rushed. Uh, what would you think of the Kevin Owens Bobby Roode match? I've got my own thoughts here. <laughs> I thought about it and I looked at it. I tried, and I tried to watch it twice. Yeah, it just came to me in a way that I said, okay. This is not how you, all I kept thinking was in my mind, this is not a way to use Bobby Roode. No. I just kept thinking, nope. okay, this is Bobby Roode, a significant heel character from another organization. You could come in and have him do more things, yet you have him be fodder for Kevin Owens. I just felt like, you know what? This is not where Bobby Roode needs to be. You, you would have thought his transition to Raw would have been better where you have him maybe defeating a Chad Gable. You then have him going up against Elias and having more multiple good matches and then maybe getting into a title picture. But getting being fodder for Kevin Owens on a Monday night program, a premiere show like Raw, I think the word was just 
whoa, yeah. It, that's I was blown away. I was like, wow, really? And I used to watch a lot of TNA. All right, I don't watch as much anymore, and that's just because of my uh, my television provider. Uh, I've switched to Sling. I went cut the cord. Anyways, Bobby Roode was one of the main draws in TNA. He was a fun guy to watch. You were interested in his matches. This match I was totally disinterested in. Yeah. And I realized it probably two minutes into the match. I was like, wow, I'm really not interested in this match at all. Like, I, there's a million other things I could be doing right now. I don't care to watch this match. And I love Kevin Owens. I think Kevin Owens is great at what Kevin Owens does. And Bobby Roode was awesome in TNA. Bobby Roode was great in NXT. This rendition, this character of Bobby Roode, not good. And it's falling flat. And it's hard to watch. Yeah, thumbs down. However, I did enjoy Drew McIntyre versus Chad Gable. I think we all did. I think wow. this was a great match. Great, a great match. And you can see the development of Drew McIntyre from his first stint in WWE. Chad Gable, that's a guy you can put in and have a lot of good matches with a lot of different people. It was good. When Drew hits you, like, okay, we both agree that, and we both are of the understanding, we, we fully commit to this, that it, it's play fighting, right? Some of these guys really do hit each other. but Sports entertainment. It, it's play fighting, all right? Yes. When he hits you, Oh, like I feel it. Yeah. Like, like it's real. Like he is one of those dudes who, when he hits you, it's not like a Shane McMahon punch, or it, it's not like uh, who else has really bad punches? Um, oh damn, who's one of the dudes who have like just atrocious? Like they pull all their punches. It, it's not like that. When he hits you, he is laying into you. Like I believe he is punching you. Do you know what I'm saying? It, Drew McIntyre right now is is the complete package. The complete package. I, and I like the way they're using him right now. They're they're building him up. He's having a couple matches here, a couple matches there. They're not thrusting him into the main card right now. Let him build. Let him get there. Let the crowd get behind him. He's a heel, and the crowd is behind him. The crowd loves him right now. That's awesome. Now, Let this go. Now, February happens, and you have this massive two-hour gauntlet match for the men. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're like, oh, okay, they're going to try this again. They're going to do it now for the women. Mm -hmm. Except you drastically cut their time and you don't allow them to actually, you know, have a real realistic gauntlet match. And I'm like, wait a minute, you have all these women to showcase. You have this amazing gauntlet match for the men. Why not just copy it? Right. Haven't start off in the, why not start off the gauntlet match hour, hour and a half? Maybe uh, if you, if you don't want to go the full two hours, maybe you go uh, an hour into it and you, you have Sasha Banks win it. And it came down to Sasha Banks and Ruby riot with Sasha Banks taking it down I was okay with the winner. No problem. Sasha Banks, fine. Women's money in the bank. Her addition will make it great. But that gauntlet match was rushed, and it, it was herky-jerky, and it was thumbs down for me. I think the gauntlet match was, like you said, rushed. It wasn't well done. I, so I have a little bit of an issue with the way it finished. I think Sasha Banks is the right choice for money in the bank, which is what this is about. I think her defeating Ruby Riot was the bad call. Does that make sense? You should have had Ruby be over. Yeah, well, so I think Ruby Riot, out of the three that are in, in the Riot squad, Ruby Riot, she's the prize. She's she's the moneymaker. I feel like she gets put, her and her group, I shouldn't just say she, the Riot squad gets put in these positions where they've got to get everybody else over. Nobody's ever getting them over. At some point, Ruby Riot's got to get over because she is the moneymaker in that group. Yeah, I think Sasha Bakes addition to, to Money in the Bank is the right call. I think it's going to make for a much better match. But at some point, you got to give Ruby Riot the push. You got to let her get over. You know, if you if it was going to come down to, to Sasha Banks uh, getting the push, then why not have it be Bailey? Why not have Ruby Riot come out, let her sit there, whip up on some people, and then have Bailey come out second to last and have Bailey beat Ruby Riot and just say, Ruby Riot had sat there defeated, I don't know, six contenders prior to five contenders, and then let it come down to Sasha Banks, Bailey. You got another overlapping story there that we've never got a conclusion to. Because if you remember back at WrestleMania, they were supposed to fight at some point. We've never gotten that, never had a conclusion. And now you can have Sasha Banks go over Bailey yet again. Do you know what I'm saying? And I just think it, it makes for better storytelling. Makes sense. I, I think you, I think again, the writers missed and the bookers missed. Okay. So overall, what were your thoughts on Raw? 
I felt like Raw was a little uneven. It mm-hmm. caught my interest at some points, and other points it dipped. I felt like it was highlighted by Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins. Those guys are definitely, their stock watch is way up. Their their stock is way through the roof. Seth Rollins is coming into his own where you don't want to miss a match. I mean, he's on fire. He's eloquently moving around the ring. Drew McIntyre, I want him to be the next guy to face Brock Lesnar. Drew McIntyre, Brock Lesnar, amazing. But again, now you have a problem in that the the low point of the show is Sami Zayn. It's like I have no interest in Bobby Lashley and Sami Zayn. And those are guys that you should be, anytime you see them, great. The barbecue stuff was fun for Memorial Day, but that's gimmicky. That's kind of like television stuff. I'm mm-hmm. not down for that 100%. Again, we saw the script. It was way over scripted. But a food fight on Memorial Day, fine. We all can get it. But highlights, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, low lights, Sami Zayn, Bobby Roode in the gauntlet match. Yeah. So I, I, it's uneven. So. You, I agree with you 100%. Again, uneven show. Um, it's like getting a pancake and it's a little bit too dark on one side and way too you, light. On you the got other monsters. Side. You got Bobby Lashley. He's no jabroni. And you got him in this feud that probably could be ranked right now. It's the worst feud of 2018. Sami Zayn, Bobby Lashley. I'm not, I mean, other than the, the, the four seconds I gave it, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. It was again, another horrible finish onto the next one. Right. Yeah. And you don't want to say that with these kind of feuds. Exactly. Speaking of onto the next one. Tuesday night, SmackDown. Whoa, good announcements, right? <laughs> yes. We open with a very sweaty Samoa Joe cutting a promo. Wow. Why is Samoa Joe always so sweaty? Well, somebody there are people, right, exactly. Just does, one of those, one of those guys. some type of endocrine system problem? What is going on? He has a bad pituitary gland. Well, it's the bright lights and, you know, maybe. <laughs> is that what it is? Maybe, I he don't know. He sweats more yeah. than anybody else I know. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a sweaty dude. And that guy sweats way more than me. <laughs> Anyways. Samoa Joe, very sweaty, cutting a promo on Daniel Bryant, uh, which leads to, of course, Daniel Bryant coming out. Yep. In the end, Big Cass hobbles down to the ring wearing a suit and he's got a crutch and jumps into the ring where he announces that he's been cleared to wrestle, then just melees Joe and Bryant. And of course, what does this lead to? A triple threat match. That's right. And the main event. <laughs> so this is for the final spot in Money of the Bank. Did you like how all this kind of came together? I did. I thought this was highlighted by, again, Joe cuts a phenomenal promo, and, and, and Brian is great. But I think this was highlighted by Big Cass coming out and announced, his announcement that he was cleared, that was I, I thought was well done. But here's the problem that I had was prior to the show, it was announced that it would be for the first time ever Samoa Joe taking yes. on Daniel Bryan. So I was teased for that. And when you tease the doc and you don't deliver on it and you add Big Cass to the mix, I don't need Big Cass in my It wouldn't really soup. be first time. It was like... R-O-H, yeah, like yeah. 2000. First time on network television in a long time. <laughs> right. So I was excited for that. And then you add Big Cass, so it was a little bit of a letdown for me. I didn't want to see it that way. But in terms of the writing and the way they wanted to handle it, uh, I was okay with it. Yeah. Next, uh, Lana's getting a little bit of a push here, and Vince McMahon sees things for her. So she comes out with uh, Rusev and Aiden English to challenge Naomi to a dance-off. Weird. Whatever. Uh, Naomi brings the Usos with her. So it, it was pretty good. It was entertaining. I thought it was solid. One of those things now we can clearly see what's going on. She's more of an entertainer. Mm-hmm. She's more of an attraction. And not everybody on the roster has to be a wrestler that has to just be like AJ Styles or, you know, like um, uh, Sasha Banks or things like that. You can have somebody that's entertaining and has a look and somebody that can be of the entertainment variety. Maybe right. not so much the sports entertainer completely. But she can work on her wrestling. And so Vince sees something in her, and we all do when we go on her Instagram and stuff like that. So <laughs> we see some talent and some assets that she brings to the table. It's just maybe not all wrestling. Never using your phone ever. <laughs> Sticky. Um, so yes. So Lana ends up attacking Naomi. Uh, I thought it was sold well by Rusev and Aiden English, who were like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? What's going on? And the Usos were just kind of shocked and amazed themselves. So this ends up breaking down, and you've got Jimmy and Jay getting involved with Rusev and Aiden English. Um, Lana, in the end, takes the worst of it. So next week, I'm expecting mix match challenge here. You're going to have a, a guy. Makes girl. sense, right? Yeah. yeah. This is kind of the direction we're going right now, I think. Exactly. Um, speaking of six-man tag matches, we end up getting one between the New Day versus The Miz and The Bar. Did you like this? Did you think this kind of played the way it was supposed to play and kind of built what they wanted to build towards for money in the bank? Exactly. And so sometimes with the schedule, I can see now why they're... they're I can see why they keep doing these six-man matches. You take less bumps, you can get more guys in the action. So anytime you see the New Day, Miz, and the Bar, I I definitely was down for it. It was a good result. I enjoyed the match. Obviously, like in anything else, you could give more time. But in the end, I enjoyed the contest thoroughly. 
After that, we get a little bit of filler, and then it's on to the main event, which yep. is Samoa Joe, who ends up putting Daniel Bryant to sleep while Big Cass was incapacitated. I thought this was awesome. I thought for sure... Elevating Samoa Joe is never yes. a bad thing. I thought for Thumbs sure up. Joe was going to get screwed again. Nope. Samoa Joe's time in WWE has been so herky-jerky, it, it's been brutal. He's been a guy who was thrust into the into the spotlight with Brock Lesnar, only to be defeated. Um, he had a bunch of other start and stops due to injury. He had uh, he was supposed to challenge John Cena, but that never got going. It, it's been very stop and start for him. So hopefully he can stay healthy here. And I, I think this was a good call because very good call. You, you don't hurt Big Cass in, in his stock. You, I don't think you can hurt Daniel Bryant right now. I, he's so high up, right? So if somebody has to do a job for somebody else, I think Bryant has to do the job for Joe, and I think this works out just fine. Exactly. Best way to use Samoa Joe is elevate him to the moon. Potentially, then, you could set up AJ Styles Samoa Joe, or you could have Daniel Bryant have an extended feud with him, or you could have Samoa Joe in other title pictures. But when you have an elevated Samoa Joe, a guy that is the total package with promos, he, the look, he's a total package. It's got to keep him healthy because of his physical style. The problem with him, though, is he is a little bit snug. He's got to kind of loosen up a little bit in the ring because he's hurting people and he hurts himself. So, you know, what's the best ability? Availability. And he's been hurt and he's missed a couple of WrestleManias because of it. And so you're exactly right. His push has been limited and hampered by injuries and things like that. But if you can get some heat from Daniel Bryan and get some rub and take that and get yourself over, Samoa Joe's the man. So what did you think of SmackDown Live? I enjoyed it. I thought it was smooth. I felt like it did a lot to enhance the money in the bank. Obviously, you know, I didn't really, wasn't the most impressed with the Perfect 10 versus Nakamura. It was okay. But yeah, you said the filler. That was part of the filler. Yeah, it was part of the filler. It's, you know, it was, there were some lulls definitely in the action. But the rest of it, that we, the stuff that we highlighted, I thought was really good. And anytime you could see Samoa Joe and uh, Daniel Bryan in a, in a ring together, it's good stuff. To open with with Joe and Brian and then to close with them with a dash of Cass, I thought it was a solid show. Exactly. I thought it worked out really well. So does SmackDown then tie Raw now at 20 apiece for the verdict? This is a tough one because I wanted SmackDown to catch up, but for me thoroughly. But for me, I just felt like with Seth Rollins and what he was able to do with Jinder Mahal, when you can make Jinder Mahal have a good match and you got Drew McIntyre and you got – uh you know, some big time names over there on Raw. I thought the entire package of Raw was l- just a little bit better than SmackDown this week. Yeah, this one was really close, and I have a hard time giving it to SmackDown. Yeah, they didn't do enough to earn it. Yeah, I, I feel like Raw, which maybe we're rewarding a bad product for doing something decent this week, I, I felt like Raw earned it this week. Yep. And so I have no problem giving them the point. So again, every time SmackDown gets a little bit closer in the verdict, Raw, Raw puts on a good just kind of. And leaps ahead. You know, it's Memorial Day, so uh, they were able to put on a good show, and uh, it didn't make you want to turn it off too much. Right. All right, so you want some news and notes? Get me with the news and notes. What's up? All right, so some spoiler warnings here. Johnny Morrison, remember him as Johnny Nitro from WWE. He currently wrestles for Impact amongst other federations that he's a part of. He has reached out to New Japan to see if there's any interest in him coming over. This could be awesome if you're a New Japan fan as well as a Johnny Morris fan, Johnny Morrison fan. Ayo Shiari, uh, she's coming over from Stardom in Japan and will be signing with the WWE. She was supposed to come over last year with Kari Singh. She's awesome. Like, in the ring, she's incredible. Um, she had an injury that prevented her from signing back then. It's now believed that she will compete in this year's Mae Young Classic. So keep an eye out for her. Sounds like CM Punk and WWE may come to a deal regarding their lawsuit. Um, this is in regards to Dr. Chris Amans. This is the doctor who... When CM Punk had a staph infection growing inside of him, a man was like, oh, no, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Go out there and wrestle. And CM Punk couldn't figure out why he felt so sick and why he was not feeling well. Turns out he had a really, really bad uh, staph infection. If you've ever had a staph infection or know anything about staph infections, they can kill you. This is a total juxtaposition from where Punk was as little as six months ago where he refused to agree to any deal. So we'll have to see kind of how this plays out and what's going to happen going forward. Uh, Rey Mysterio wants to come back to WWE. He also wants to revive the LWO. Yes, oh, the Latino World Latino Order. Latino World Order. So the issue with Bray in WWE right now is Bray wants to work a condensed schedule. Yeah, less, less. Yes, he doesn't. Pay me more and less work dates. He, he only wants to do part-time, doesn't want to be there all the time. Um, and that's a big sticking point for WWE because 
The only person who really gets that treatment is Brock and John Cena. He likes the stable to consist of basically everybody, every Latino that is in WWE. So Kalisto, Sin Cara, uh, Cien Almas, and basically anybody else who wears a mask and wrestles lucha. He wants them in the LWO. A big faction is not bad. Now representing the Latino world order. Right. Rey Mysterio. <laughs> I think it'd be good. Um, some quick injury updates. It's believed that Randy Orton and Dean Ambrose will both be back in time for SummerSlam. If you remember, Dean Ambrose was dealing with that tricep injury. Sounds like he's finally, he had some complications, a little bit of a setback. Sounds like he's got that kind of under control now. So in time for SummerSlam, as well as Randy Orton, um, Jason Jordan was expected to be back this past Monday, where it was believed he was supposed to team with Chad Gable and recreate American Alpha. Ah. He no-showed. Well, he Mm. didn't no-show, but they didn't utilize him. So not sure what's going on there, but don't be surprised if you see Jason Jordan in the coming weeks. So you got this music ready to go? You got it kind of queued up here? I do. Okay. It's here. So give me one sec here. Let me set the stage. So former WWE wrestler Enzo Amore, he broke his silence. Uh, His real name is Eric Arden. He went live this past Monday (laughs) in Times Square where he announced his new clothing line called Real Ones. That's also his new rap name, Real One. Real One. Um, He released his new music video for his aspiring rap career. In this rap song, it's called Phoenix, and there's a little bit of a double entendre there. Phoenix is where the rap, the rape allegations took place, as well as a phoenix rising from the ashes. In the video, he takes shots deep. at WWE. It is deep. He takes shots at WWE, as well as the girl who proclaimed that he raped her. Um, he also buries Enzo Amore in a casket. Uh-oh. And you can see him coming out of the casket. Uh, it, it, I would recommend going to YouTube, go to World Star, because that's who released it was World Star Hip Hop. Um, watch the video because there's a lot of imagery in it, and uh, there, there's a girl with dyed hair and glasses, and that's supposed to be the girl who claimed that he raped her. So just, I would recommend checking it out. But here is some audio of uh, real one, aka Enzo More, aka Eric Arden. We are live from Brooklyn, New York for the 25th anniversary of sports entertainment. We will be live in two dozen nights. Today! And over uh, you can't even get around this door! It's the 25th anniversary of wrestling tonight! And if you knew anything about commitment, you wouldn't be asking me to go to the store for you. Now let me say and do my work! You fucking piece of shit in that wrestling! Mom, you let me do my job! Hello? What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, oh, hold on, breaking news! Listen up, you sloppy, jalopy son of a bitch. Sitting on your fucking couch with your fucking phone in your hand, doing your armchair detective work, thinking you know what the fuck's going on. When was the last time you got a two month social media challenge? You think I wasn't gonna say shit? I'ma let y'all talk shit, talk shit. If I had a fuck to give, I would give it. If you're froggy, you ain't gotta leave, all you gotta do is rip it. Rain on a zero fucks given exhibit. I got nothing to lose, minute. A minute, then a minute to win it. Sky's the limit. Sorry, officer, gotta admit it. Yeah, I'm over the limit. Left got now with a one way ticket. Rolled up with it. Smart that bitch. Find it now with it. Let my lips. Piss like this. Bitch, I just shit. I feel the hate on the crazy eight. Uh, let's see y'all pivot. Go on my court. Bounce back with number 24. Fucking shit footprint right off my image. Wow, I just love. Cause you can last. Wow, double that sword. Once I love, once I hate. Either way, I glitch. I ain't dumb. What's it gonna say? What's it gonna do? Got him on the toes like a midget. Okay, guys. Okay, I, quick review of that. Yep. I will say this. It didn't need the beginning. The first part got my attention, yep. but Enzo doesn't need to be rapping on it. It's not that good. Well, it's not that good, and here's the thing. It's his first try. Everyone thinks that they're a rapper, and it's not that easy, but I would say maybe the words could have been delivered by a different performer, and it's just one of those things where... Is it where, his voice that's bothering you? I, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it's really it, bad, but then again, I like a lot of underground rap. Yeah, and this sounds really underground, like basement cuts. Yes, perfect way to say it. It could be done a lot better. It could be produced in a much better way. It's and uh, yeah, it's the way he's delivering the His song. Voice is extremely raspy in it, and I would it's where say you can almost not hear it. And the bass line is see sometimes extremely high. We let um, our emotions get the best of us. That name Enzo Amore can deliver you funds basically in a few years from now. Look, you let this die down, you come back by SummerSlam, Enzo Amore could be a guy that you can cash in on still. You were found not guilty. There was no charges. You were, you did not face any charges, so you were not guilty of the crime that you were, you know, described to have commit. 
So you could have probably worked your way back to WWE. When you do stuff like this, it kind of chips away at a character. I don't think I'm going to buy into the real one. I'm more buy into Enzo Amore and get back to what you know. Get back to fixing your life and getting back into the WWE. This is a set was this was a small setback. Get back to what you know. This ain't it. Yeah, you no. know, and Enzo has changed his physical appearance as well, shaving his monstrous yeah. beard. And, Enzo's done, huh? All right. Yeah. So no more Enzo Amore. You, you got the real Enzo. one. You got the real one, yeah. huh? So I don't know. It was okay. I, like I'm not going to yeah. go buy the CD, but no, exactly. You know, this will be something. Um, but I we will, definitely can bootleg it and yeah, get it for free, like yeah, we did. Yeah, this baby. This is something <laughs> I, I'll listen to in my own personal time. Where I'm like, oh, why not? Something angry? Why? Sure. Exactly. What the hell? All right. Great uh, lyrically, podcast. I think it's decent though. Like if you go listen to the lyrics and you read the lyrics like off a sheet of paper, lyrically he 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 puts some stuff together. But I, again, I don't think it's great. Great podcast. Always enjoy talking wrestling with you because Money in the Bank is working its way toward us for our extravaganza. It's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I want to see who wins the Money in the Bank matches. It'll be a good time on the road to Money in the Bank. For the Jock Adam Straczynski, I am the Doc John Macaroon. You've listened to the Doc and Jock Wrestling Podcast. Go visit our website, DetroitSportsPodcast.com, for all news and notes regarding the network. Follow Adam on Twitter at Adam R S T R O Z. Follow the network at Detroit Podcast. If you're watching an event, you hear any news and notes you want to drop us, we read everything, and we're definitely huge marks here on the network. If you're watching an event, if you're watching something you think we should check it out or comment on it, shoot us a message anytime. See everybody next week.